Hey guys, it's Roderick and I'm here with your view for Immortal X-Men number 16. So I have been very, very excited about this issue because honestly, it has ratcheted up to be one of the best Fall of X books. Like we're getting constant action, we're getting constant tie-ins, and now we got some really, really good, good gimme gotchas, okay? So Immortal X-Men 16, fantastic. Let's jump into it, okay? So first we get Celine and Sebastian. They're kind of looking at a satellite picture of Krakoa, the other island that's left. They focus on the uh, external gate, which is all Celine has really been focused on is getting this eternal gate, trying to get her fellow magical eternals back, which I was like, girl, I don't know why you think that's such a big deal, but whatever. I get it. They were duped. You were almost killed. Apocalypse is trash. But why don't you take some of their problems to Apocalypse, right? Like if you're so big and bad, why don't you go find Apocalypse and get him to fix the eternal gate, right? But she's not really ready for that type of smoke. So she's just going to try to just get the eternal gate herself, right? So then they go and see the eternal gate. They see the bodies by the eternal gate. And then they see Xavier and they're like, oh my God, we pushed him too far, whatever, right? So then Sebastian takes Celine to his vault where he has like all his stuff that's been locked up and he pulls out his hellfire armor. I was like, okay, dude, whatever. Sebastian just really irks me because he's just that kind of turncoat, like profiteer just for no reason. Like I get the place, you know, I get that's how he's always been. But I was like, dude, like, I just can't wait till when the X-Men start checking off people who screwed them over because your name is going to be like three or four on that list. And I'm really ready, ready for Sebastian Shaw really to get his. Because remember, he doesn't have his mutant powers anymore. So when they decide to really come and get him, ain't nobody going to be able to, no, ain't nobody going to help him, right? When Orcus falls, Celine, Sebastian Shaw, they're going to be four and five and six. So I know there's some Celine fans out here. Yeah, she's cute. Yeah, she's good. But she's going to get hers too, right? So then we see Sebastian now has just launched his assault on Xavier. So Xavier's like running through the jungle, running through the forest, trying to avoid Sebastian and his like hellfire armor or whatever. Meanwhile, back in the wasteland, okay, we see Egg and he's being attacked by all these multiple bishops in the wasteland. Very similar to like what we see, what we saw with like the multiple Logans, okay? So then... Here comes uh, Hope and Exodus, Captain Save a Hose. They get Egg, and we find out now that all the five have now been accounted for, right? So all the five have now been accounted for. It's all great, it's all glorious, and they're all together again. Now, all of a sudden, we now see the five doing their thing, right? Now, on the other page, there's a data page of Destiny's Diaspora Diary, right? And Destiny just has been salty this entire time during this entire comic book because she just doesn't trust Mother Righteous. She can't see into the future. We really see how dependent Destiny is and be able to foresee things and able to how to move. Like, now she's really blind, blind, and she's just not really acclimating, but she sees enough to know not to trust Mother Righteous, which we also know, too, not to trust Mother Righteous. And also, so let's break into this whole thing, right? We have the five together, you know, so we find out that Mother Righteous was the one who told them where to find Egg, okay? Which I'm like, mm, not trusting that. And so they're like regenerating, creating new mutants. Wait a minute. The way this, if you remember House of X, Powers of X, the way this circuit works is, is that you need Egg, you need Elixir, you need Hope, you need Proteus, and you also need, um, oh, oh, and the other girl too, like the, I forget what her name was, someone dropped down in the comments, but those are the five, right, forgot what the other chick in the five was, but you also need Sinister's genetic material. The whole point of bringing Sinister onto the Krakoan age was the fact that he had a database of all of the mutants, so that then Egg creates the egg, so you inject the sinister genetic material into it. The five gets together, hold hands, kumbaya, new mutant pops up, and then whoever whoever telepath can wear Cerebro, wears Cerebro, and puts the person's consciousness into it. That's how it works. But they've been kind of skipping these steps. Like if you remember the um, X-Men um, Eternals Avengers whole series, or Avengers X-Men Eternals Axe, 
right? When they regenerated Captain America, I was like, well, how'd they do that? So if you really didn't need Sinister anyway, why was Sinister around? Now, if you remember from the Sins of Sinister, the re one of the reasons why they may not be using the Sinister genetic material is because he booby-trapped it and all that shit popped off in Sins of Sinister. So I'm just kind of like, mm, are we skipping steps here? How is this math mathing, right? But anyway, they don't have a Cerebro. But Mother Righteous can pull, go to the waiting room and pull their essence down. And I'm just like, mm, I'm not feeling this, Mother Righteous. I, I just not, I'm not feeling this at all. So then Mother Righteous goes, oh, there's one more lost me you need to find. And Destiny's like, girl, you being way too helpful. Why can't you? Why? Who are you? What do you know? How do you know all of this? You even told us where we are. And then Exodus and Hope snap back at Destiny being like, you know what, bitch? She's been a lot more helpful than you because you can't really see to the future. And if you really want to help us, you will let us read your mind and know what you actually know. She's like, what's in here is too much for you. So you just mind the business that pays you and you go ahead and follow her. And Exodus is like, okay, fine. We may have snapped off, but look, girl, we ain't got that many options, okay? She's the only chick over here with, hey, with answers. You ain't got no answers and all you got was salt. And we trying to grow crops and keep these people alive. We got telekinetics with bubbles. And then I got this whole desert booby trap. So either you either get in line with being helpful or do whatever, right? So anyway, Dustin's like, okay, fine, fine, fine. They're like, this way you can find another mutant. Hope is like, look, girl, I get it. I don't really trust her either, but these are options we got. Keep your good eyes on her. Well, you know what I mean, girl. Keep an eye on her while we're gone. Destiny's like, yeah, 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 right? So then back at Krakoa, Celine and Sebastian are still trying to fester like Xavier out. They're throwing bombs, they're whatever. And Xavier's like, okay, what does this dude want? Like, what is he after? So then he telepathically connects with Emma. And Emma's salty ass, like, oh, what, we speaking now? She's like, bitch, I don't need your saltiness. What does Shaw want? Oh, Fist took over the Hellfire Club. So Xavier's like, look. He gets through to Shaw and says, look, I will give you the bank accounts for you to start the process of taking back over to Hellfire Club. Krakoa will always be here. Don't worry about it. If you do that, he's like, okay, cool, then fine. A deal's a deal. He's like, good. And as Shaw is telling Celine, Xavier takes over Shaw's mind and bombs Celine, right? So then they're like, okay, fine. So then he was like, so then Shaw takes old, grabs Celine's limb body. He was like, damn, Xavier, I didn't think you had it in her. He's like, even Celine squirmed when he saw the bodies. And Xavier's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't kill nobody. So we're like, well, what do you mean? Like, because remember, all we saw were their ochre soldiers showing up, and then we saw the ochre soldiers dead. Soldiers dead. We all assumed that was Xavier who was doing the killing, right? But mm, at the end, we find out maybe not, right? But anyway. Hope and X's, they're flying to the desert. They're looking for this new mutant. And guess who it is? Yes! It is Mother Jean Grey who is in chains and whatever. And she's babbling. And so if, you re if you're reading Jean Grey, what you realize is, is that Jean is talking the same talk that she was talking about while she was in the Jean, while she's in the Jean Grey series. So what's happening is, as we surmise, Jean is in the same space that the mutants are, and she's having this whole situation going on that's happening in the Jean Grey series, and it's occurring in her mind, right? Because she's talking about, I tried to steal the shuttle, I gave it to Logan, it's not working. So all the permutations that's going on in Jean Grey, where Jean's trying to find a solution, are happening within her mind. And then Hope is like, what is going on? What is she talking about? Then Apocalypse shows up out the sand, right? Now, he has showed up early or earlier in the comic book saying that his goal is to test the mutants and see how whether or not they can withstand the revelation that's about to happen. So Exodus and Apocalypse are fighting. Hope is like, where did he come from? And Apocalypse is like, this revelation is about to happen. And she's like, you know what? Let me just read, read, let me just read Jean's mind and figure out what's going on. She reads the mind. She gets a psychic backlash. And she's like, um, okay. Her mind is frazzled, but I find where we are. We're in the white hot room. What's that? And Exodus is like, what? So let's take a pause here. Let's, let's now, now we know where they are. Let's take a beat. So Mother Righteous has a Phoenix egg. Mother Righteous transports all the mutants to the white hot room. Now we can assume based upon the way things are going is that since Jean died first, Jean dies and Jean gets taken to the white hot room. 
Mother Righteous figures this out and then transports all the mutants to, to the white hot room, right? So we have all the mutants plus Jean plus Hope and we're like, now we got the five there. What is her angle, right? What is it that she really wants out of this? Is she trying to take over the Phoenix Force? Is she trying to get the Phoenix Force to get into Hope? You know, because I feel like when Jean gets into her right senses, I keep telling you Mother Righteous is like that whole thing in True Blood. Like, I think she's trying to take advantage of the fact that Jean's not in her right mind, but she left the mutant, she led the mutants to Jean. So obviously Jean is part of whatever this plan, but this plan ain't gonna go to ride because once Jean gets in her right mind, they're gonna be like, click, click, click on the two heels and gonna go on back to where they're going. But I'm, I'm, I'm into this. Like, now the story is getting interesting, right? We're like, okay, Mother Righteous, you may have bitten off more than you could chew, but let's see this, right? Because obviously we know, like, Destiny, she can't be trusted, but we don't know what her end game is, but we know it involves, it has to involve Jean or she wouldn't have led them all there. Or she's trying to show, or she already knew Jean was there. I was like, we might as well put this bitch in the fold because you know what? I can't, I, I better keep an eye on her so for my plan to go awry. So drop down in the comments and let me know what you think her theories are, right? So then, finally back on Krakoa, after there is gone, Xavier sees these footsteps and then he follows his full footsteps to the beach down to a cave where we see the chimpanzee with the Cyclops visor. Now, if you remember from earlier, it's probably like in Immortal X-Men, probably about 10 or so, right before the whole Sins of Sinister situation happened, you find out that Sinister had created all these kind of like genetic combinations. So those are like the Cyclops chimps. So the Cyclops chimps leads him to this mirror where Xavier stands. And as he's standing, there's like a sinister red diamond that says, please don't kill yourself. So now we're thinking maybe that's who killed all the soldiers by the Eternal Gates for all the Sinister whatever. And what does that mean? And why is Sinister back in the mix of things? Like, I'm so tired of him. Like, he's on number two on my list. We got Moira, we got Sinister, we got Sebastian, we got Celine. Orcus is our, I mean, this is all after we take her Orcus, right? Like, these are the people that we really need to be dealt with. So I was like, God, are we back to Sinister again? But I have to say, I am totally into this. Like, this whole thing, I can't wait to see how this all wraps up. I mean, Mortal X-Men is supposedly coming to an end at the end of the year because we, as we move to the Rise of X, Rise of the House of X, Fall of the House of X. So I'm really, really interested to see how this plays out. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment. Let's get some discussion going because I really want to know what you guys think about this, what your theories are as to what you think Mother Righteous's angle is. And I will see you guys soon. Bye, guys.